In Star Wars, in any of the episodes that we're making, extras are extraordinarily important in defining the place that we're at. To, you know, have people understand that there was another world there. I don't know how we ended up here. And where planet are you from? Uh, Sydney. <laughs> there are sequences in Star Wars like the Cantina where I think that's certainly my favorite sequence and that's entirely made up of extras and it turned out to be one of the best in the whole saga. Extras seem to have very high self-esteem, I think, because they're put through so much during the day. They're herded around like cattle. Get on the bus! Get on the bus! <laughs> they don't do anything for hours at a time, so you have to really feel good about yourself. I'm a spaceman, but a very important spaceman. <laughs> As an ordinary extra, I say, you're not a star, but you're a, a twinkle beyond Pluto. Can we boogie? <laughs> the response for Star Wars has been like no other production I've ever worked on. Because people know it and they love it and they're dedicated to it and they're fans. It's so different working on a project that has um, so much history. The Ewoks. The Ewoks. Yeah. Why did you remember that one? Oh, because I didn't get the part. <laughs> I've seen every Star Wars film in the first week it was out, and I just can't believe I'm here. Stroke of luck, really. The Force was with us. <laughs> I know. The reaction, particularly with younger people, when you just casually mention, oh, I've done a couple of days in Star Wars. Star Wars! I know, yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. I'm getting ready for my part as an intergalactic backpacker. You're all normal pedestrians. An extra is someone who is in the background of a scene who has no dialogue but may have a little bit of business. You go in the direction I told you to go as I walked along the side. You're an animated body. An animated body, a <laughs> screen filler. <laughs> so folks, just pick it up a bit, just be a bit animated. Just because you're in space doesn't mean that you can't have fun. You'll see that this is actually all fogged up, so it's impossible to see out of any of this, but I mean, that's the fun of acting, really, isn't it? <laughs> we actually don't need an acting ability. You're always going to be doing the same thing. What we need is a look. Basically, what we want to do is try and fit the faces of the particular extras into um, costumes which would suit their own little characters. You sort of can't just have a costume allotted for people because we're getting all different shapes and sizes. Up and down. I can't see where, where he's moving the lightsabers. Jedi don't have to see. Got it? When you finish your schooling, you'll look like Ewan McGregor. Lots of facial hair, tall. Everybody falls for the strong sign yeah, type. I mean, yeah, I get those. That's you, right? <laughs> Yeah! Every creature and every extra that you see in each movie has a name, has a personality, um, has a backstory. They are some sort of being that has actually been given a life. There's one in um, episode two. His name is Kit Fisto. Just an extra, a guy, but all of a sudden, like, put in his name, and now there's the story there. Like, you want to know something about him. I love it. Shoot it. When this goes on, I'm a totally different person. I'm female. It's easy. We have a sequence in episode two where we're in a nightclub. Yo, we got a really good date for you. I fixed Fix you up. Here she is. Come here. Put your arm around Tony here. There you go. It's a very classic Western type of barroom scene where the doors fly open and the two gunslingers walk in. We needed about 150 extras. There had to be a certain look to them. I've never looked like this before. I have been airbrushed all over. It's a place that's in the lower depths of, of Curacao, a place that we actually haven't really seen before. There is one thing worse than working with me, it's being an extra in a Star Wars movie, is okay? <laughs> and I, I would debate that. that. So when we come around that second position. And you have a great first assistant director um, who can move his extras around. Ah, oh, it's fantastic. Everyone take a step to their right. There's two rules. First rule is I don't care what you do. I don't care where you go. I don't care if you need to buy a paper, go to the bathroom, whatever. But the second rule is you've got to tell me you're going to do it. You guys just stepped off set. What happened? Stand-ins are slightly higher in status than, than extras. Perhaps when you're standing in the queue at lunchtime, you, you can stand in front of someone who's an extra. We are indebted to you for your bravery, Obi-Wan Kenobi. In episode one, there's a scene, a particularly beautiful, haunting 
dramatic scene where there are two um, extras who I think basically define what extra acting is all about. Congratulations on your election, Chancellor. That happens to be Ben Burton myself in this sequence. Classic example for anyone that anyone can be an extra, but they can do it a lot better than we did. Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you so much.